In this video, you'll learn about the three stages of the planning process, the output of the planning process, and management by objectives and key results. Planning is best understood through the lens of our production principles. Recall that a key method of controlling future output is to forecast demand, and then build to forecast. If projections don't match reality, you need to increase or decrease production. These principles apply not only in production, but in any planning process. We can break planning into three steps. One, establish environmental demand. What will the environment demand of you, your business, or your organization? Two, understand your present status. Where will you be if you change nothing? And three, close the gap. This is where you compare and reconcile step one and two and answer the question, what more or less do you need to produce to meet projected demand? Let's dive into each step in more detail. Your environment is defined by the groups that directly influence what you do. This includes your team and any neighboring teams you rely on, your customers, the vendors you use, and the competitors your customers judge you against. You also need to factor in any technological changes that could augment or replace you. Once you have established your environment, you need to look at it in two timeframes, now and in the future. Ask yourself, what do my customers want now? Am I satisfying them? And what will they expect from me in the future? The most important thing to focus on is the difference between your environmental demands now and what you expect them to be. Don't worry about how you're going to meet demand just yet. Your goal is to only determine whether your current activities are meeting current demands and whether you need to do anything else to meet future demand. Now it's time to determine your present status. List out your current capabilities and projects. As you do this, try to use the same terms you use to state demand. If you define demand in terms of new features or products, your present status should be as well. You also need to factor in that some of your projects that you're working on will be scrapped, some of your time will be eaten up by busy work, and that you need slack in your system to account for problems or changes in demand. The final step is to start new tasks or modify existing ones to close the gap between your environmental demand and what your present status will produce. What do you need to do to close the gap and what can you do? Consider each question separately and then decide what you will actually do. It's likely that you won't be able to do everything you want to do. Your strategy should be to choose the actions that produce the most leverage. These are the actions that produce the most output for the least amount of work. The output of the planning process are the decisions that are made and the actions that are taken as a result. The goal of planning is to produce a set of tasks that are performed now to affect future events. Ask yourself, what do I have to do today to solve or better avoid tomorrow's problem? Today's gap is yesterday's planning failure. You should focus and implement only the portion of a plan that lies between now and your next planning process. Everything else you can and will look at again. You should also be careful not to plan too frequently. You need time to get feedback to determine whether the decisions you made were correct. When planning, you need to involve the operating management of the organization. The people planning cannot be separate from the people who are actually implementing the plan. The leverage you can gain from planning can only be realized by marrying planning and implementation. And remember, saying yes to one thing 
is saying no to something else. Once demand is well defined and planning is complete, you can use management by objectives and key results, OKRs. The idea behind OKRs is simple. If you don't know where you're going, you won't get there. To be successful with OKRs, you need to answer two questions. One, where do I want to go? The answer provides your objectives. And two, how will I know if I am getting there? This gives you your key results. OKRs are designed to provide feedback relevant to the task at hand and should tell you how you are doing and whether you need to make adjustments. For feedback to be effective, you need to receive it as soon as possible. So OKRs should be set for a relatively short period of time. If you plan for a year, you should set OKRs on a quarterly or even monthly basis. Keep the number of objectives small. If you focus on everything, you focus on nothing. A few well-chosen OKRs are what make the system work. And if you want to dive deeper into OKRs, I highly recommend Measure What Matters by John Doerr.